Hi, this is Debbie and today I'm sharing a video I created for my Doodling with Debbie series for Samsa Stamp. I have two cards to share with you that use simple striped backgrounds as the key feature. I think the important thing with backgrounds such as these is to get a cracking colour scheme to work with. I was browsing stripes on Pinterest the other day when I came across this sweater with an oatmeal background and bold stripes in mustard, black, terracotta and white. I continued browsing and came across multiple examples of similar jumpers, all supporting lovely stripes. But I did notice dusky pinks making an appearance too. So I set about using Winsor & Newton permanent white gouache along with American Crafts paper fashion gouache sets. I recently took a closer look at these gouache media and you'll find that video on my blog and YouTube channel. I mixed a dusky pink, mustard black, terracotta and oatmeal colours on a side plate as my palette. And I love seeing these colours together, they remind me a lot of Instagram accounts I follow which are using these warm autumn tones in their homes and also from illustrators for branding. I'm using Archer's Hot Press Watercolour card as its smooth surface is ideal for getting smooth washes of colour when using gouache. I am terrible for being able to paint, draw or cut straight lines and so I mark the painter's tape I'd use to adhere the card to a board at regular intervals in an attempt to keep my lines straight. Having said that, I'm not too worried as I think one of the key elements of stripes such as this is their hand-painted look. A little imperfection works in your favour here, giving that quirky hand-drawn look that's so popular. I then painted the archer's card with a layer of oatmeal mix. I kept the paint of a creamy consistency without using too much water to get the best coverage. I then dried this layer and set about painting a stripe of each colour from my test watch, drying each layer before moving on to the next. As I had used the oatmeal colour for my swatch for the background, I used white as my fifth stripe. Gouache is a watercolour medium and you can see here that as I brush the stripes across the page, the stiff brush and moisture from the new layer reactivates the layer below. At first I thought I'd have to repeat the process, but when I look back, I really like the colour, the variation in colour. Again, that quirky hand-painted look. Now I'm using my gouache paints today but a simple striped background such as this could be recreated with a multitude of different options. You could use traditional watercolours or ink blend each area using masking paper to get clean lines between each stripe or colour each stripe with Copic markers or cut strips of coloured card. Whichever method you have the supplies for is the perfect method to give a lovely striped background a go. Once I dried the panel for the last time, I removed the painter's tape and trimmed the piece down to 3.5 by 5 inches, in line with the 4 bar size card. For my second card, I wanted to create a repeat pattern using the 5 colours from the test swatch. Again, there are numerous examples of this type of pattern on social media. The example I showed on Pinterest were from Sarah Bukakini Meadows, sorry Sarah for no doubt pronouncing your name wrong. And I love the look of it, but it was a little too loose and random for my brain, and so I base my pattern more on that of Kirsten Sevig. When I paint with gouache, I find that the most time-consuming aspect is washing my brush in between each colour. That gouache sure does like to get in among the bristles, and when you think your brush is clean, it often isn't. So with the prospect of changing colour so many times for a pattern such as this, I thought it easier to map out blocks on my card in pencil, and then I could paint one colour at a time. All I had to do was paint the first block, then count four spaces for the other colours, then paint the next block. Hmm, that's easier said than done, I found. I think when I came to paint the black stripes, I splattered black across my piece. And although I mopped it up and knew that I'd be able to paint over it, and you wouldn't be able to see it, I still think it took me off my stride slightly, and counting to five was obviously too much for my flustered mind. However, I made do, and I don't think you really noticed that I messed up the order. Let's just say I was going for that quirky hand-painted look again. I dried the panel and then went in with a small Tombow Mono Eraser to remove the last of the pencil lines. And there's my second simple stripe background. Simple as long as you can count to five, that is. Okay, it's now time to turn these two backgrounds into cards. For the first wide stripe panel, I took the outline clustered leaves die and cut it from ivory card. I added Gina K Connect glue to key points and it did the die cut to the panel. I then wrapped a piece of twine around the card and tied on the back and I think this adds a nice touch of texture to the card. I added three of the leaves from the outline clustered leaves die offset and kept in place with more Gina K Connect glue. I added the panel to an ivory card base and then all that was left to do was the sentiment. I like simple sentiment strips and also felt this went well with the theme of the card. 
So I took a birthday greeting from the Simple Sentiments 2 set from Kathy Zilski in collaboration with Samsa Stamp and stamped it in clear embossing ink on black card, sprinkled over white embossing powder and then heat set before trimming to a skinny banner and adding over the leaf die cut with foam adhesive. To embellish that card I'm going to use Nuvo Droplets and here's a top tip for you. I often squeeze out favourite colours onto a craft mat and leave to dry overnight. Then you can simply peel the droplets off the mat the next day. This way the droplets are dry and you can fiddle around with their placement until you're happy before adhering them. Now the only thing is that when I squeezed out the droplets last night I didn't have the dusky pink in mind yet. I was still working off the first sweater colours and so I'll be combining the dried droplets of sugared almond, dark walnut and simply white with squeezing fresh droplets of the bubblegum blush. The fresh droplets will obviously adhere themselves but for the dry ones I used a dab of Gina K Connect glue to keep them in place. Now for the second background I'm going to use the Thanks Frame die and for this I painted swatches of some of the colours and dried them before running the die through for each colour. And seeing those patches of colour already had my mind buzzing as to lovely colour block ideas for this colour scheme. I played around with different combinations of ways to adhere the frame elements but in the end decided I liked the tone on tone effect of the main part of the die cut from the oatmeal painted card with a mustard back panel and skinny terracotta frame. I stamped a white heat embossed another sentiment from the Simple Sentiments 2 set that went with a thanks frame die cut and trimmed the piece to a skinny banner. Then I added foam adhesive to the back of all the elements and mounted the panel onto a fog card base before aligning the thanks die cut top and centre with a coordinating sentiment strip underneath. I then used the same combination of Nuvo droplets, both the dry sugared almond, dark walnut and simply white ones with a few freshly squeezed bubblegum blush. And there you go, two simple painted striped backgrounds with die cut elements, skinny sentiment strips and Nuvo droplets to coordinate. I hope you give stripes a go too. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at lamdudedesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Also if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks and I'll see you next time.